<coughs> That's hot. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Up early, early this morning, uh, and the first video of the day is going to be an update on three of the gun control bills that have been placed on legislative calendars, meaning they can be voted on at any minute. Uh, one in the House thus far, two in the Senate. And then I'm going to tell you how close we are in the Senate to get to that magic 60 on one of the bills that I am, and I'm honestly very concerned about. I've mentioned it in the past, and I'm going to talk about it again. So as a quick update for this morning, um, the following bills have been placed on legislative calendars. In the House, uh, H.R. 2377, that's the national red flag legislation that has been placed on the calendar, meaning Nancy Pelosi can call it for a vote at any time. And she did say that we were getting, it was going to get a vote this week. So expect that to happen more on that bill in a moment. Uh, in the Senate, the uh, the two bills that have been there the longest, actually, uh, that people are starting to remember they're there and call for, is H.R. 8 and H.R. 1446. Those bills are a universal background check. And I've had a couple viewers who have said to me, why are we so worried about universal background checks? Because background checks already happen. Well, yes, that's the exact reason we don't need universal background checks. Universal background checks encompass a gun registry. We don't want them to make it legal to have a gun registry. Uh, that's no bueno. In 1446, they, uh, in addition, they also make to uh, seek to make private transfer, person-to-person -person transfers, uh, illegal. Something that's been legal since the, the dawn of time, right? <laughs> We're going to all of a sudden make more things illegal with the hope that criminals will follow the law when in all actuality all you're really doing if you think logically is disarming the law-abiding populace the criminals will still be criminals and then who will have anything to defend themselves if you want to play it out on paper so those three bills have been scheduled for votes uh, they're on the calendar there's no date and time currently it's just on the calendar meaning they can pluck it and place it and go to a vote uh, the latter two, H.R. 8 and H.R. 1446, are in the Senate, meaning they need that 60 uh, vote threshold in the filibuster, which means they need at least 10 Republicans to side with these two bills. I don't see that happening, to be honest. What they're doing, what I think Chuck Schumer is doing by now scheduling the vote, is to get a roll call vote. What that will be used for is ammunition to weaponize, weaponize that vote, come November to say these people voted against gun control in the midst of all this terrible, terrible gun control. And there was another mass shooting in Philadelphia last night. Uh, we have to have to do something. And these people stand in the way and they're bought by the gun lobby and the gun lobby's broke, but nobody knows that. Um, so I don't think those are going to make it. My concern is 2377, the red flag bill that was scheduled, oh, put the place on the calendar in the house. That's going to fly through. Well, it's going to absolutely fly through the House. It's going to be rushed to the Senate. And that is where I have a great concern. Why? Well, Jared, you said they need 60 votes, and there's no way 10 Republicans will side with this. Well, follow my math, if you will, because uh, we're dangerously close. And in my vision, my, my point of view, my angle on this one is all they have to do is bribe two or three uh, senators. And they do, they bribe each other all the time, pull strings, pull favors. Uh, hey, remember that time your son uh, had a laptop and we got him off? That kind of stuff. So it's a 50-50 split. Now, I'm, I'm assuming they go right down party lines, especially with gun control. They're very, very uh, divided. And there is one wild card, which we'll talk about at the end. But this is how I see it. Uh, and I could be wrong. This is my opinion. doesn't mean it's gospel. And if you have a different opinion, that's okay. doesn't mean uh, we have to brawl. It just means that we see things slightly different. But I'm being cautious on this. So right away, I'm going to give you five people who are working with the Democrats to get this red flag bill more palatable. All right. And I'm counting those five as an automatic vote because they're working to get the bill uh, through Congress to get more uh, Democrat, more Democrats to like the new version that Republicans will like. That's Lindsey Graham, South Carolina, John Cornyn of Texas, uh, Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania, Susan Collins of Maine and Bill Cassidy, Louisiana. I am counting those five as yes votes. Does that mean you have to? Nope, doesn't mean that. But uh, this is my video, and that's what I'm doing. Now, that means five more. They would need five more Republicans to vote yay on a red flag legislation bill, and then it would 
be able to, you know, get closure and, and, and get past the filibuster and onto the floor for a full vote. And uh, this is how I see it. Marco Rubio of Florida. I see him as a yes. Why? Well, because he hasn't said much about it. And B, he has in his own, on his own sponsored red flag legislation in the past, last session. Marco Rubio um, in the Senate sponsored red flag legislation. So unless he's, you know, totally changed his ways, I see him as a very strong possibility to vote for it. Just my gut. That would be 56. The potential 57 would be Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. And why do I say that? Because she's kind of been seen as wishy-washy. That's why. She hasn't said anything specific. In fact, I think every time she's been addressed recently about it, she has just deflected. Which, for me, either you say, no, I'm for it, yes, I'm for it, or I don't want you to know how I feel for a couple reasons. A, fallout from my party and my constituents, or B, I don't want the flack from saying I'm against it. So she's wishy-washy, and that's concerning for me, especially when we're talking about fundamentally changing the infrastructure of the United States of America and how it was created and the government structure. That's potentially 57. Potential number 58 is Mitt Romney, former governor here in Massachusetts, now senator in Utah. He wasn't pro-gun when he was here. Doesn't I don't see him as pro-gun out there. And uh, I, I believe Mitt Romney has come out in favor of red flag laws a few times. Um, so that would be potentially 58, which would leave two people that they're going to try to you know, beat their brows down and do everything they can to pull out every stop to attain this agenda goal, which they have not been able to attain for years. And they're that close. The wild card I spoke about. The wild card is the one Democrat that we have unfortunately had to lean on the last two years for anti-gun legislation, and that is Senator Joe Manchin in West Virginia. Don't know how he's going to side on this one. I mean, he has sponsored background check stuff before, which means he's open to changing how guns uh, are, are legislated, but every time, well, but in recent times, he's come up uh, and been pro 2A, not been for uh, fundamentally changing things. So will he stay the same? I don't know. Remember, the government, his wife got a job in government, maybe that's pulled and said, hey, look what we did for you. Bears, bears watching is what I'm saying. Uh, so if if Manchin doesn't vote for it, then they would have to, you know, beg, borrow, and steal, and bribe a third senator. And you know, <laughs> let's be honest. In politics, is it really that difficult to bribe three uh, sheep? But you know, that's all they want is money and power. I don't know. I don't really uh, have much faith. So I wanted to bring that to you to let everybody know what's inside this chamber and why I say that I'm worried about the red flag legislation. Even though it's 50-50, I just showed you how easy it is to get to 60. And that one I'm concerned about because there's a lot of people on both sides of the aisle talking about we have to do something. And that one is the most concerning. So let me know what you guys and gals think down below. I also wanted to say that after I did the video yesterday challenging every 2A organization out there to come out with some type of a statement on how they stand on red flag legislation, because some of them have said they're for it as long as there's due process and it's impossible to have due process in a bill that's designed to subvert due process. We've heard from two of them. I heard from two of them immediately. Uh, I talked to people at Firearms Policy Coalition and they, they vehemently are against it uh, and hold my guns uh, got in touch with me and said they are absolutely against them. And I've already talked to, to people at GOA forever and I know that they are vehemently against it. So what say the rest of you? Um, I'm not saying, I'm not, uh, putting on you on blast. I just need, I, we need to know where you stand because some groups like NRA have said they are for them as long as they're due process. We need to stop dangerous people before they act. So Congress should provide funding for states to adopt risk protection orders. This can help prevent violent behavior before it turns into a tragedy. And John Crump reported yesterday that the NSSF has told him that they are for it as long as there's due process. That's impossible, and that's concerning. Till we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe, because that's what the Second Amendment is for, and that's why they want it gone so bad. However, even if the Second Amendment was stripped away and they went up to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and used a bunch of whiteout, our rights are not given to us 
by government. Chew on that one. Take care. Thank you.